Uh, welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Adventures in History Land YouTube channel. Uh, and today uh, I am joined by uh, a good Twitter friend of mine, uh, one of the lights of Twitter, I might say, uh, along with a couple of other people who keeps things very uh, irreverent and, and humorous there. Uh, uh, an author uh, and, his, and respected historian. So the level of this channel has just been elevated immensely. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, and of course, I'm talking about, because you can see her on the screen, Jacqueline Wrighty. Hello. Hello. Absolute <laughs> pleasure to have you today. Well, thank uh, we, you have no, we have obviously just, you know, come on and just started talking. We haven't been talking for about 10 minutes at all. No, not at all. No. Uh, Jackie, uh, as I will continue to call you, <laughs> and uh, I would encourage you also to call me any any variation of my name you like. Hi, friend. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Miriam. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, actually, it is actually quite possible if we had just met and I hadn't like known you for a, for quite a while on Twitter, um, that I would probably have forgotten your name by now. Uh, <laughs> it's Joan. Joan. Yeah. All oh, right. Excellent. 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 Excellent job. Um, I'm I'm Horatio. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, Joan, would you like to uh, would you like to uh, say a little about yourself for the for the for the hordes hordes of clamoring people wanting to know? who you are and what you do. Oh, no problem. Um, I've, um, my background is actually in political history, um, would you believe, but um, because I look at the overlap between military and political um, debate, um, I stray quite a lot into military history. So uh, depending on the audience, I describe myself as a political or a military historian. Today I am uh, starring as a military historian, so hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I specialise in the uh, politics of the uh, um, in Britain between 1793-1815. Um, a couple of years ago, I wrote a book on a chap called the uh, Second Earl of Chatham, uh, who was actually the elder brother of Pitt the Younger. Um, not a very well-known personality. Oh yes, him. Not a very well-known personality in history, and not the. Uh, um, well liked one shall we say um but uh, uh as i researched him i i found him more and more fascinating and uh pretty central to be honest um by virtue of his uh um who he was and the roles he was filling he was first lord of the admiralty master general of the ordnance um so i was su quite surprised by what i found and you'll find out more if you read my book um I am currently working on uh, a book about Sir Hume Popham, um, who is a bit like Marmite. Um, some people say, oh gosh, he sounds really interesting. Others go, ah! <laughs> um, and so I admit that before I started researching him, I fell more into the second category than the first. <laughs> um, I'm somewhere between the two at the moment, uh, definitely finding him absolutely fascinating, but what a character, crikey. Um, and because he wrote an awful lot, it's going to be a long time before that book actually uh, turns up in the public eye. But um, uh, <laughs> currently looking at September 2021. But, mm -hmm. you know, watch this space. <laughs> watch the space, indeed. Yes. And anybody who uh, follows uh, you on Twitter will. Uh, and if you if you don't follow Jackie on Twitter, I actually rec highly recommend you do. That's uh, at late Lord Chatham. I believe, <laughs> or the late Lord. I, I will put a, I'll put a little uh, thing at the bottom of the screen at because late, you know this is this, this is what we this is what we YouTubers do, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, please do follow him, and uh, I I don't think you'll regret it at all. But if you do already, and when you follow her, you will find uh, a great deal of additional information. It's almost like a, a, a in progress appendix or something Twitter uh, <laughs> for historians and things like that. <laughs> uh, 
uh, where where I tend, to, tend to empty my brain on Twitter. It's yeah, true. <laughs> where, where you will where you will where you, where you will find um, whether you've had a good day with with Popham or a bad day with Popham, you will find out on Twitter. Uh, and obviously, a lot of a lot of um, I don't know nostalgia about John. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm never going to let him go. He's always going to be there. <laughs> John is John is John is ever present on Twitter. Uh, to the extent that I now call him John as well. I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, there's a whole sort of section of, of, of really dedicated historians and researchers who will just just start calling their subjects by their first names. Uh, but why don't you tell uh, what what I mean? I don't. Uh, what what sounded a bit like George the Third and the madness there for a second. But uh, uh, why don't you tell me about Popper Poppers a little? What what? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I ever call him that ever. Never, never. We're, we're you know, we're very respectful, serious people. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got one of them too. Whoop. <laughs> oh, Poppers. Um, yes, he's um, someone I, I came across. Um, well, actually, a lot of people come across him, I think, um, because uh, one of the first things you'll discover if you do follow me on Twitter is that I play a game called Pop and Bingo, <laughs> uh, which um, the largest number of points you can get is if you're reading a document that has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the Navy or with um, the Revolutionary or Napoleonic Wars or anything. And all of a sudden, so whom Riggs Popham turns up? Um, at which point I usually shout, Bingo! Um, <laughs> I have people playing this all over the world. Um, <laughs> people send me emails, little snippets saying bingo. Um, he turns up everywhere. So chances are, if you know something about the Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars, you've already encountered him at least once, maybe twice, mm -hmm. um, because he was involved in absolutely everything. Um, I first found him through the Wolfram campaign of 1809, um, which of course I Research. And, uh, FYI, everybody, that's how you pronounce that. I had um, I gave a talk last year on Wolfram to Dutch people, you know, proper, real Dutch people. <laughs> and I had to ask before I started what half the place names mm. uh, ought to sound like because I didn't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a bingo moment. But oh, you but... learnt about, you, you encountered Popham uh, uh, at uh, Wolfram and, yes. and then spiralled uncontrollably down a hill. Yeah, pretty much, yes. Um, I, mean, I, I gave a talk a couple of years ago for the uh, Society of Army Historical Research um, about Walkeren, um, in which I talked for a couple of pages um, on Popham. Um, and um, some people came up afterwards and asked some questions, uh, you know, who was he? What did he, you know? He sounds very interesting. Do you know more? I had to admit I didn't really know much more. Um, and one day he just appeared on the back of my bike um, while I was cycling. Oh yeah. <laughs> and he told me um, in great detail, in my ear, exactly why I should write about him. And uh, so I went home, dashed off a, um, a book proposal, um, and it was accepted. And now I'm doomed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Haunted um, by his spectre day and night. <laughs> yeah, uh, he has had a biography written about him before um, by a descendant or collateral descendant. I don't, I don't. Well, I presume there are some descendants. He had several children. Um, I don't actually know, but the the biography was written by a collateral descendant, and it is it, it is quite good. Um, but it does show some signs of not having been written by someone with a uh, history background. So it's not always very critical of what Popham wrote. Uh, now, I don't think Popham was telling the truth half the time when he wrote stuff, <laughs> <laughs> which is making my task very hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think some of the things he said and some of the things he did can be interpreted in a number of different ways. So I think that I have something new to bring to the table. I certainly hope I do. Mm. Um, not least because I am looking at him from the perspective of a person who has some knowledge of the political background. And Popham was very definitely a politician afloat. Um, and he had strong political connections. Uh, these are very important for understanding exactly who, 
who he was and what he was doing and why he was in a variety of different places at different times. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping I can bring that um, into the mix, um, along with just the fact that he hasn't had a biography written of him for 30 years. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it's all right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's certain people in the Napoleonic sphere who just continually have books written about them because somebody found one new letter uh, <laughs> or just it has a different change things. <laughs> yeah, or uh, just has a different opinion yes. uh, about them uh, and so if you if your subject only has one book written about him then I, I you know I would say well he needs more <laughs> I think Popham could but... do with oh, oh gosh he's he <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, it kind of reminds me I mean there's this thing with with this thing there's this thing with navy men you know, that yeah. they, they got a lot more places, seemingly, than the army guys, especially if they were of a certain oh, rank. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and it's not just Cochrane, uh, uh, you know, the, the, mm-hmm. who is like the most famous of that type, or Mr. Sidney yeah. Smith, who is yeah. perhaps one of the most controversial ones. But yeah. Parfum seems to be giving him a run for his money, <laughs> from, from what I've been seeing. Very much in that, um, that category of, of naval officer, so sort of officer who prided himself on being able to use his initiative. Mm. Um, I would say not only prided himself, but just did it at the drop of a hat. Mm. Um, so I, I've just been reading a, um, a string of, of correspondence he had with the Admiralty where he's explaining why he's at, literally on the other side of the world from where he ought to be. <laughs> uh, this is, and this is not even the Buenos Aires expedition, which, mm. um, you know, where uh, he was also... You see, this is just, he's everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's astounding. I mean, I did, had run across his name before, but because I mostly read about the Duke of Wellington and, and, uh, and soldiers and things like that. Mm. But, um, but nevertheless, his name appears in connection with the Duke of Wellington a, a lot as well. And mm-hmm. then you, you, then I'm reading your tweets and you know what you're talking about. Uh, and you know, he's, and he's all over the world and he's, he's writing letters about all sorts of different things that he's apparently an expert on. And well, yeah, he's an expert you know. on everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm very much looking forward to next year. Um, and, uh, that, uh, I think that's a good example of one of the, what, what, uh, but we, well, it's a good sort of example that we both find a lot of enjoyment in history, even though when it comes to writing books, there's a lot of hard work actually as well. Um, <laughs> and I think I think this is a, it's it's just sort of a way of kind of dealing with uh, just the grind of find tracking down sources and transcribing them and things mm-hmm. like that. That you sort of have to to just to look at them with a light kind of. With, with just a humorous way as well to find find the humor in them and things and with some it's easier than others but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes but the humor humor always helps in history although uh you know you had to remember these are real people yes call them poppers or john or whatever but uh, <laughs> yes, I, I i have been told off a few times online for apparently not taking a subject seriously enough when I've been just discussing it. <laughs> yeah, you can also take things too seriously. I think you can uh-huh. as well because I was just making a few jokes about some museum sort of like mm-hmm. uh, some museum displays or something like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It depends. But, you may have stumbled upon the person who arranged the museum. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps I did, perhaps. And so it's, uh, oh dear, awkward. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, and I should also say that in terms of the, the humorous aspect of this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have not seen anything unless you've seen the long-running Twitter conversations between Lynn Bryant and uh, my, uh, my guest today. <laughs> Oh yes. <laughs> now she is talking about real people, but she's also talking about fictional people <laughs> when she is doing and she stuff. Does it very, very well with the overlap between the two. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that is the mark of a good historical I fiction do. writer if you can blur the line. So, what, what, what are the, a few? As Julie Andrews would say, what are a few of your favourite things about history? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you can sing if you want. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> well, I can, but I shan't because uh, otherwise people really would switch off at that stage. Um, oh gosh, a few of my favourite things. Well, um, it's very hard for me to say actually what attracts me to a particular topic. Um, I think I tweeted about that the other day actually, that I call it the zing moment. Um, 
I think I, I'm a sucker for tragedy. <laughs> There's a lot of that to work with. Yeah. Um, and uh, which is exactly what I'm going after Popham, who's just not tragic at all, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think thinking more generally about history, I think probably what attracts me to history as a topic um, more than the individuals within it is the fact that um, there are so many ways you can approach something. Um, so you can read one book on the subject and then you can read another book on the subject and they're completely different books, um, even though they're about the same person. I think um, uh, um, what, what one of my parents once asked me, you've got how many books on Pitt the Younger? Um, doesn't he always die in the end? The answer is, but, you know, the journey in between is always different. Um, so that's one thing I really like about history. Um, I suppose the other thing is that it is a window into another life because you know as famous statement goes the past is a different country um and it really is oh my god um, mm. <laughs> um and yet it's also familiar mm. so it's kind of like hopping on a plane and going to this different country where everyone speaks a slightly different language but you can still understand them they're still human beings so you've got that rapport there they react in similar ways to similar situations but at the same time it's fun because mm not the same and of course you've got that added spice of unpredictability that you get with all human interactions um <laughs> yeah like um, this one right now <laughs> well, yes, um and I, i'm gonna i'm gonna put that one as my my last point my third point okay. the humanity of history yeah. it is about people it is about people interacting with other people um they may be um aristocrats they may be poor people trying to rub along um they're still people and you can still understand most of the time understand i'm going to leave pop them a little bit of leeway here mostly understand what why they do things um and the best thing about history i suppose is that usually there's a paper trail yeah. <laughs> Um, so you, you're a bit like Sherlock Holmes, you've got this paper trail, mm. uh, it's not complete, there are big holes, you have to work out why the holes are there, what might have filled the holes, and this, this, this goes back yeah. to the first point, this is why it, it's always different, because people will have different ideas of how yeah. things hang together and, and um, what people were thinking at a given moment. Um, but yeah, the humanity, it is absolutely what makes history mm -hmm. compelling <laughs> absolutely uh, uh i think i really like i mean in, in terms of in terms of military history which is what i read a lot about um mm -hmm. i really i really liked what ken burns said about a, a war was that it is it is uh, a, it, it allows two truths to exist at the same time and that um uh, irrespective of whether one is right or whether you agree with one or the other, two sides are believing two yeah. things, and mm -hmm. to them it is correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is uh, incredibly compelling on a wider sort of sort of uh, plane. Um, uh, I, I also I I came at history because I wanted to I, I like stories. And so um, I, I read a, 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 an awful lot of books just because I wanted to read stories, and I liked it a lot more because they were they were real, um, and they had happened. And um, uh, you know, historical fiction as well was sort of led on from that because mm. uh, uh, because that's playing with it. Yes. You know, that's uh, that's creating a world, uh, and and I, I even with non-fiction history I, I love the fact that you can take that you can research that you can research and research and research and get all this massive information and through that you can you can you can create a world from uh in someone's mind that actually what has re has a real connection yes. I, I i agree with that i think the the, the best historical non-fiction is uh, has a, a significant narrative side to it so that you can you not only get the um the analysis but you also get 
the context that makes the analysis fit. Mm. Um, so uh, what, what one book that I, I read in the last couple of years, it's um, called Resolution. It's about the, um, uh, the fourth Duke of Buckland and his brother, Lord Robert Manners, um, who died in 1782. At, uh, was it the Battle of Sant? I, uh, Maybe um, one of those naval battles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we need we need Kate Jameson now. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, but it begins with a series of chapters about um, which are basically fiction, really, but they're not fiction because they're based on real stories of people joining the navy and mm. being a midshipman and uh, um, going from being a, someone who lived lived all their time on land to someone who lives all their time on a ship. Um, and I just found that amazing. I was just entranced after the first chapter. I was like, yes, <laughs> this is the kind of history I want to write as well. As absolutely, reading. absolutely. Um, That's the goal. That's the... <laughs> cause it really, you know, it really did give it body. Um, and as I said, it wasn't fiction as such because it was built on real stories, mm. but it was written in a fictional way. So obviously, mm. you know, um, recreating the experience that Lord Robert Manners would have had, except he didn't leave any account of his experience. So, you know, borrowing from other people. Yeah. Um, and I suppose that's also what makes historical fiction um, the best historical fiction work, because it has, it, it relies more on that um, world building, I suppose. But um, um, it's the same principle. It is absolutely. Uh, I was thinking there about some of my favourite narrative history uh, books. Um, there's too many. There's too many. <laughs> so you're glancing at your shelves. Yeah, I'm trying, to, trying to find. Uh, I'm trying to find inspiration, but it's it's absolutely one of the things that I try to do, and. Yeah. Um, very hard. <laughs> it is very hard because I some because I usually get sort of get back to the. I actually end up coming back to. You know, this guy's quote is just so good that yeah. mm. <laughs> why don't I just use that? <laughs> yeah. Well, some some people do just put things in 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 such a neat way that there is no mm. better way of doing it. So you're better off just quoting them mm -hmm. and saying so and so wrote this blah 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 um, than trying to better it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get tripped up whenever I then because what I what I sort of do is, you know, in it, a really good person with narrative fiction, uh, narrative history will 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 do something where they they sort of disseminate everything they've read into a sentence sometimes yeah. or a paragraph, yeah. and what I'll end up doing is I will kind of do that but larger, yeah. And so it just runs on for thousands of words where I'll use okay well instead of just me disseminating it, here's what this guy said, and here's what this guy said, and here's what this guy yeah. said, all talking about the same thing. <laughs> and yeah. then you're like... <laughs> yeah, um, that, that, that works. That sometimes is all you can do, really. Mm. But, I mean, if, if there are many people who've said very pissy things about something, then <laughs> sometimes that's, you know, that's all there is to be said. Mm -hmm. um, I... Uh, I mean, one thing that I, te I I always say, and I've said it many times on various social media forums, is um, the advice that my thesis supervisor gave me, which is, um, you know, you, you may be writing a thesis, but what you're really doing is writing a story. Um, and I, it struck me quite strongly at the time. Um, and I, I, I believe it quite strongly um, because it is, the things that stick in your mind are the narrative histories that give you both the best of both worlds that sort of worlds build and at the same time give you the historical basis. Um, and there aren't that many, but there are a few authors out there who do that very well, yeah. I think. Yes, um, doing it well is the, is yeah. the, is the problem because there's a yeah. lot of people who do narrative history Yes. But sometimes it's just sort of kind of sensational. It's like you're just rehashing something or 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 just yeah. telling just telling it as a story. Yes. Which is fine. Yeah. It just it's not as good as like the gold, uh, like the really good yeah. ones. I yeah. do find that there's quite a few. Uh, I do. I have found quite a few American authors who are rather good at it. 
Yes, it does seem to be um, something that is. I, I don't know why, um, but you're right. It is something that is found quite a lot on the other side of the Atlantic. I mean, I, um, uh, and I think it's it's a tradition that's been there for quite a long time. I, I can certainly think of books written in the 60s. Oh yeah. I think, I think there was um, a treatment of um, uh, Benedict Arnold and John Andre. I think it was Flexner. Is that uh, the name of the author? It's, it sounds familiar. Um, but, um, this was, this was, well, I mean, I read that when, when I was in my teens, but I remember at the time thinking, wow, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this kind of, yeah, this is good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure um, all, all the American viewers, if you're uh, podcast now screaming at their screens going yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy um, <laughs> well uh, yeah I, I have a great soft spot for American history so they can come in and tell us all about the different uh, authors we should be we should be looking at <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> just, just add just add to my never-ending list of books yeah. that I, I want to buy <laughs> the other problem. there's always there's always more <laughs> oh yes which brings me on to a kind of brings me on to a, a, like it maybe what 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 annoys you a little about certain things about history because one of the things that annoys me yeah <laughs> just <laughs> war, just warm up I think we got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, one of the things that annoys me for a start is nothing personal about any people it's the price of some books <sighs> you know yeah. And I do not understand how a book that is out of print and is of no collectible worth whatsoever <laughs> can cost. And I'm not joking. There was a book yesterday I saw nine hundred and eighty eight pounds on Amazon. <laughs> just just no. No. <laughs> I don't really understand because, I mean, there are some new books and old books that yeah. so as soon as it goes out of print, the, the price goes. <laughs> almost like someone's trying to prevent you buying it um because i mean no one's going to pay 900 and whatever pounds know. for a, a book um, why is it even listed at that price it, it, you know unless it was an 18th century book that belonged to uh, sir guy carlton himself for example yes then maybe yes but uh, yeah I, I i agree i think the the price of books is definitely and, and not just books i mean i, I think just uh, um the inaccessibility of some online databases for mm. non academic people um, yeah. is quite difficult I mean particularly now again the libraries are closed um, some day uh, I can tootle down to, to, to my library and I can use the, um, uh, the the newspaper database in the library that that's worked perfectly well but right now I can't so uh, a few days a week or so ago someone asked me a question um, and I looked it up on the sources I had access to and I thought well normally now I would go down to the library and I would look at the newspaper database and oh oddly I haven't got an Athens password or anything like that so I'm stuck now. Um, <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, I can understand why it's restricted to a large extent, course, yeah. but um, at the same time, it is slightly. I mean, if you could, yeah, if you <laughs> could, it feels like you should be able to sort of present yeah. what you're trying to work on would be fairer. And yeah. given you have the right parameters that they would allow you to. Um, yeah. Indeed, I I would you know I would pay good good money for a, yeah. an Amazon's password. Um, but <laughs> oh well. Um, but uh, I suppose go, going back to sort of um, things that annoy me um, uh, that, that aren't going to get the copyright police on my doorstep anytime soon. <laughs> um, uh, I think I think the thing that annoys me most um, about and this is something that I think quite a lot of um, people who um, work with archival sources are going to uh, sympathise with and I've moaned about this several times on Twitter and I saw someone else moaning yesterday about it on Twitter and I commented on her Twitter feed saying yes me too. <laughs> the lack of, of you know in some books the lack of citations. <laughs> Um, please, please, if you've quoted a really good source, just let us know where it is so that we can go and read it too, because, you know, um, that's what history is. It's about reading the sources. It um, is, yeah. And, you know, um, we're not all looking at the same thing, so we're not all going to go and, and, and um, undercut your next project or whatever. It's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just about 
being honest really because mm. there isn't really a way of knowing whether someone's made something up or uh, um, I'm not saying that people who don't cite properly do make it up um, but it's it's slightly it makes me wonder what people are thinking when they don't do it I suspect yeah. 90 percent of the time the people who don't do it properly are just not thinking about citing um, but I su suspect there is also some I don't know uh, for, for, uh, yeah, I get annoyed by that too for the same reasons. Yeah. Uh, m with me, it, a lot of it is sometimes, yeah, it depends, because sometimes it's like, oh, okay, why, why, why is that, you know, what, 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 what's making, yeah, what is the thought process behind it? Yes. Yeah. So how does it help your, your argument kind of thing? Yeah. And uh, another one is, um, my goodness, this looks like it is from a account that I need to read for something else exactly. and I want to see the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I know that Ian Fletcher, who uh, has written a lot of books on the Peninsula War, doesn't really do sources. And um, he says it's because he doesn't want to pretend to be academic about it. Um, I used to uh, sympathise with that because I too have that slight hang up where I don't want to make it seem as if I'm pretending to be someone who's more educated than I am. But um, I have learned since doing History Land how necessary it is to, and writing the books as well, how, how necessary it is to absolutely cite the source where it came from, even though it's a pain to do. <laughs> um, it's absolutely necessary, and it's now a kind of an addiction. It's part of my brain now that I, I look for the. Uh, what 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 I've seen that you've produced has been, you know, fine. Um, uh, and I think that you know, I, I would disagree with you quite strongly that you're not academic. Um, <laughs> I, maybe I, I, you're not academically trained, but you've definitely got uh, well, you know the wherewithal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's my own hang up it's my own hang up it's nothing actually real it's it's just a, it's just the insecurity it's the imposter syndrome talking um, I, I, I know the feeling yeah i um uh, my, my my blog used to be called always wants to be a, wanted to be a writer um i eventually changed it because well um <laughs> yeah. I either was or I wasn't um, and I decided I probably was in the end so I decided to change it mm -hmm. so I, I completely understand where you're coming from on that but um, it's yeah you're fine so uh, I think moving on from that very generous uh, sorry a fly just crawled over the place. that's all right it's all right anybody's welcome oh. <laughs> if he wants to get in and what's his opinion I know, I'll be um, by fly, go away. I know it's, he's, he's taking. He's trying to take. He's, he's trying to take this, the limelight from you, Jackie. Oh my God! Um, it's the ghost of Popham. He's been reading. <laughs> it's a fly. <laughs> he's coming around. You should be talking about me. You know. Right. <laughs> Talk more about me. You already. <laughs> yeah, we have. Now we're talking about things that are, that annoy us about um, about history. Flies coming back. Go away, <laughs> Go away Popham. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> Off the fly, there we go. Yeah. Maybe before we wrap up, we can we can talk uh, very briefly or something about uh, what we like in his like f historical fiction and, and movies or something like that. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, so yeah, let's go there before we before we call time. Yeah. What I... what do you like? What do I like? Um, gosh, uh, I, I think I, I spent most of my my childhood really reading historical fiction. <laughs> um, I like uh, historical fiction that tends to that allows me to um, feel like I'm there. Um, so I'm quite fussy, really, because if something pulls me out. Um, I don't continue reading. So I've got lots of books on my Kindle that are about 20, 30% done uh, <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Um, the books I really like, I go back to again and again and again. Um, and I'm going to plug Lynn Bryant here um, because I have read several of her books several times. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not just because she's my friend, she's became she became my friend after I read her books, really. So, <laughs> um, uh, 
Um, but um, she does it very well. She's got the world building down pat. Um, other things I like. Um, oh, one book I read recently uh, really stuck with me was um, Sarah Dunant. Um, it was her books on the Borgias and I know nothing about the Borgias, nothing at all. Um, so perhaps that helps actually, I don't know, but <laughs> mm. I have heard that if you want to enjoy historical yes. fiction purely, yeah. you cannot read it about your own subject because yeah. <laughs> it, it breaks the immersion when you find something that, um, yes, quite. Um, so again, that may, uh, if people who stuck past the, um, uh, um, the thing I said earlier about, um, Flexner may now be switching off. Um, <laughs> Um, but I just I thought the language and the, the world building again was all there. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, um, in terms of films, I'm very difficult to please with films. Uh, I don't really I don't really watch them um, as um, I, th I think I, I stunned uh, a large proportion of History Twitter the other day when I revealed I had never watched the, the, the film Waterloo, for example. Um, I still haven't watched it. I know um, I, I, several of my followers um, were evangelizing about it afterwards. <laughs> uh, I still haven't watched it. I'm sorry. Um, I will one day, I promise. <laughs> Um, but I think I should give a special mention to the film that started me on the 18th century, um, which was Man as King George, which ah. um, totally spun my world on its axis when I watched it um, in, it must have been in the cinema, I guess. How old was I? 15, 16? Dating myself now, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but it really just... Uh, and I I saw the stage play on online when they made it free a couple of weeks ago again. Um, stage play is significantly different from the film, but not that much. Uh, and again, I thought this is mm. this is what I like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something that's very entertaining, beautifully written, but also <laughs> with the history. Yeah. Um, so I think it probably stands with the films as well as with the books. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Um, with me, it's absolutely that balance. If an author can strike the balance of, I mean, it has to be a story first. If there's not a story first, there's no point. Mm -hmm. All right. So if it's just you've taken an Osprey book and put a fictional character in it, then <laughs> uh, no. Um, <laughs> it's still be fun to watch, but yes. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> um, what's the yeah? It, I'll, I'll I'll be less inclined to bother with it. Is the point? Um, mm -hmm. I feel I feel I'm picky too. I mean, a lot of people on history Twitter say they're picky, but then they'll just say da 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 da, -da, -da like that uh, of which ones they would like. But I yeah. do feel I'm quite picky because for a start, um, I feel like I I I floored Marcus Cribb when I told him that I had not read Sharp. Okay, you just floor me as well. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I've never read Sharp. I've never read Sharp. Um, I have, uh, in borderline, I haven't um, read uh, Hornblower. Now, Hornblower is not necessarily because I'm disinclined to read it. It's because I never found time to read it. Yes. I would like to read it. I just haven't found time to it. With uh, Sharp, um, I don't know why I never got around to Sharp particularly. I think... I don't, I don't know why, I just never took to the idea, I guess. Um, I'm not sure you could now, to be honest. Maybe not. <laughs> you know too much. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Um, I, 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 wrote, I loved, um, I know that you loved The Three Musketeers. Oh, uh, I love as, The Three Musketeers. Woo! I love The Three Musketeers too. The first, I think, first one of the first historical fiction books I read properly were, were like those sorts of books like yes. the three kidnapped and the three musketeers and um oh, wash butlers yeah, yeah something like that <laughs> treasure island i love treasure island mm -hmm. and um I think but, the same wavelength here right mm, <laughs> and and uh, uh uh the scarlet pimpernel i read oh, that I three times or more <laughs> yeah <laughs> very silly but my goodness it's oh fun. yes uh, yeah it's, <laughs> it's very silly but it, it's uh, for some reason it's one of those books that doesn't matter whether it's silly or not <laughs> 
Uh, but also, of course, I have to. I do now have to mention my ones that my favourite ones are uh, uh, historical fiction. And the reason why I declare myself picky is because I read mostly just authors that I like. Um, well, you know, not enough. What, what, once you find the groove, it's like you know, it's hard to escape from it. So, Patrick O'Brien and oh yes, yeah, and Alan Mallinson uh, are my two favourite ones. Yeah. I I agree. Um, I I haven't actually read all the Patrick O'Brien ones. Mm -hmm. um, well, not, neither have I yet. I'm trying to be disciplined about it because there aren't any more of them coming out. Well, <laughs> exactly. It's a little like um, I, I don't drink, but it's a little I, what, like what I imagine would be drinking a fine wine. So. Mm you know you don't want to hurry it you've got to savor it and i think it's very much like that the language mm -hmm. is just if someone told me that that language came straight out of an 18th 19th century source i would believe them I, I, absolutely <laughs> i i read them and I, i'm always love to read them and at the same time i'm utterly dispirited because <laughs> uh it's just the level that I would love to be able to put, to give uh, because you know I still have ambitions to write fiction, but mm -hmm. it's like yeah, it's yeah, it, it's just so pitch perfect. Yeah. Um, that it, no, it couldn't be better, really. No, um, that's amazing. But, I mean, okay. it, it it is written as if it was a novel. It was as if it was if it was a novelist like Jane Austen writing in the nineteenth century. Yep. Yeah is the way it is written basically and that is just yeah. i don't again i don't really actually have a huge favorite movie either um, no mm -hmm. uh, because of the same reasons jackie i want to thank you for coming uh to, for agreeing to do the video with me thanks very much uh, it's been an absolute pleasure uh it has been a delight to talk to you uh so to the audience who showed up wherever you are in the world at whatever time it is in the world. Uh, thank you for watching. Please do all the things that you're supposed to do if you like a video on the internet <laughs> once you finish here and uh, see you the next time.